It is the duty and responsibility of every citizen in every developing country to collect every drop of rain that falls. What falls on the ground will eventually flow into tanks and dams and rivers and that will help irrigation and agriculture. But what falls on the roofs of schools, dispensaries and public buildings is allowed to go waste. Billions of litres are wasted and every drop could have been collected for drinking water and sanitation. Water engineers have made us believe we should depend on hand pumps and open wells. Already too much water is being pumped out of the ground and the sources are not being recharged fast enough. As a result, drinking water sources are getting saline and brackish. Yet, we are going deeper and deeper to overexploit scarce fresh water sources. This is criminally expensive and unsustainable. And when the next world war they say is going to be fought over water, this is unacceptable. If only we had the humility to listen to our elders and learn how they have been collecting rainwater for thousands of years. Today, look at the badly designed schools, health centers, public buildings built by so-called qualified architects and engineers in the rural areas and you will want to weep. The Global Rainwater Harvesting Collective was established with only one single mandate construct a rainwater harvesting tank in every remote rural school in the world. The collective listened to the people, not to the paper of qualified engineers. Roofs were connected to a 50,000 litre underground waterproof tank and for six months of the year children would not have to walk to collect drinking water during school hours. With low-cost water sealed hand flush toilets constructed and rainwater readily available, more girls started coming to schools. With funds from the Government of India, the collective reached 1,300 schools in 17 states. Networking with nearly 40 grassroots organizations all over the country, collecting nearly 50 million litres of rainwater reaching 235,000 children. This simple technology based on common sense has been extended to Africa. Since 2006-2007, 20 tanks have been constructed, completed in Sierra Leone, Senegal, Mali, the Gambia, Ethiopia. Nearly 1.5 million litres of rainwater is accessible to 4,200 children during school hours. More tanks will be constructed by the people themselves in remote schools in Benin, Malawi, Ethiopia, Mali and Bhutan. The technology of collecting rainwater is simple. It does not require a private contractor from the city. Water falls on the roof. With the first rains, the roof is cleaned and the water is allowed to flow away. With the second rain, water is channeled through pipes into another sedimentation tank to collect more impurities. The overflow goes into a waterproof underground tank. The water is taken out by hand or by hand pumps so it is not wasted. A typical 100,000 litre tank with two low-cost toilets for girls should not cost more than $15,000 and it should not take more than five months to complete. This includes the digging, the waterproofing, the covering, the connecting of the roofs with the tank and the installation of the hand pump. Why are water engineers against this technology? For many reasons. They love the centralized expensive schemes that makes them indispensable and communities dependent on them. Rainwater harvesting is inexpensive, is decentralized 
and makes communities independent. The other reasons? It does not rain enough to collect rainwater to make rainwater cost effective. There is great resistance because water engineers all over Africa sincerely believe it is a waste of money. But when they are told that in Rajasthan, where, there, where it sometimes rains less than 200 millimeters, nearly 30 million liters of rainwater is collected over 200 schools, they have nothing to say. Second reason, the water collected is contaminated and not fit to drink. They forget the rain is the purest form of water. For over 10 years, children in over 100 schools in Rajasthan have been drinking water from these tanks without any ill effects. There's no reason why rainwater cannot be collected to hand flush toilets and for vegetable gardens. Where the engineers in Africa have tried collecting rainwater from the roofs, the design has been all wrong. It is an engineering practice all over Africa to collect rainwater in ferro-cement tanks above ground, even though this approach has serious technical and social disadvantages. A limited amount of rainwater can be collected, not more than 20,000 litres. The heat of summer cracks the tanks, so its lifespan is limited. The taps connected to the tanks break and there's often no one to repair them. Water runs freely and no one bothers to conserve the water. The cost of this type of tank for the amount of water collected makes this alternative too expensive. A private contract is needed to construct the above ground tank. The advantage of constructing tanks below the ground are that more water can be collected, between 50,000 to 100,000 litres. Water will not evaporate since it is underground and if constructed properly, it will not leak. There are no taps. Once underground, the water can be pumped through a low cost hand pump so no water is wasted. Only as much water as the person needs is pumped out. Underground tank construction is cheaper, only costing between 2 to 15 cents a litre. The top portion of the underground tank creates a platform that can be used for meetings or to conduct night school classes. Rainwater is decentralized water source that the community can manage, supervise and distribute where there is no dependency on the urban engineers. Collecting rainwater is a technology that is hundreds of years old and it is time it is taught in the curriculum in the technical courses for water engineers. Rainwater is free and easy to collect Exploitation of groundwater is expensive to extract and more complicated to maintain and requires specialization. Water engineers the world over have always considered the provision of drinking water as a technical problem. Whereas communities have always considered the provision, the distribution, the management and control of drinking water as a social problem. Therein lies the great difference in perception and implementation. In relief and refugee camps all over Africa, where water is supplied inefficiently through water tankers, constructing underground waterproof tanks is an absolute priority. It would provide employment to refugees and the traditional skills could be used to construct them. It would ensure no water is wasted if a hand pump is installed on the tank. It seems such an obvious solution. It is only by changing mindset that we will solve the problem of drinking water and sanitation. So come. Let's start believing in the low-cost sustainable solutions provided by poor rural communities around the world and stop listening to the water engineers.